Oh my god, it's Craft <laughs> Brew and Castle Conversation. My name is Brittany, and I like to hang out with my pals on the weekends and get really hammered, you know? So uh, it's only appropriate that we drink um, hibiscus ales, sauce with brews, and a punch. Yeah. Dudes with Brews and a Porch presents to you another edition of Strange Brews, Conspiracies, Murder, Ghost Stories, Aliens. They're all coming to get you, my dudes. <laughs> that was my California girl accent. How was that? Uh, offensive, probably, to, to California girls, but I liked it. The Beach Boys wish they all could be California girls. I, yeah. Oh my god, the Beach Boys! I love them so much. <clears throat> Rob, we're drinking a hibiscus pale ale brought to you by the fine folks at Anderson Valley Brewing Company. Now, Anderson Valley is in Boonville, California. Oh, relevant. There. Way to way to tie that in. No longer in production this beer, Rob. So uh, we have to savor the flavor, savor the zest, savor, savor it all. Just savor it all, right? Um, it is 5.5 in the ABVs, and once again, NA on the IBUs, and uh, I'm having a hard time finding a description of this stuff, dude. I don't know why. What do you mean, brewed with the uh, hibiscus flower, uh, Roselle? This beer was inspired by the Mexican family Drink Jamaica, Ha My Ka. Okay. Drink Ha My Ka. The hibiscus imparts a distinct floral aroma, a magnificent, a magnificent deep ruby color, which it does have, and a tangy flavor reminiscent of cranberries. Cranberries. Sorry, that's actually really hard to read in this light. It is a uh, um, ball hornin. It says since 1987, uh, brewed and canned by Anderson Valley Brewing Company. The uh, I like I like the artwork. It's got. A, a a bear with antlers, so that makes it a beer. Get it? Half beer or half deer, half a uh, bear. A bear. It makes it a beer. It's a common shirt that you find on things. Uh, Rob, it's let's describe it a little bit. It does have a crazy red color to it. It looks it looks cool. I like it a lot. It's what beautiful? What, what is hibiscus? Do you know? Is it fruit? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was a flower. Oh, I I guess that's what it said, huh? Hibiscus flower. That makes sense. But I feel like uh, my mom had a hibiscus plant, and I don't think it had flowers on it. It's something or another. It's not a fruit. It definitely grows somewhere. Okay. Well, let's try it. Let's see if this makes us grow in any fashion. What do you think of that smell? It's a little tart. A little tart. It's got a little tartiness to it. Um... Couldn't tell you if this is what a hibiscus tastes like, because I don't know. Wash these pants. <laughs> That's how it works, man. That's how it works. You yeah. spilled. You it wasn't even. It was from the Taco Bell that I shamefully ate in my car on the way drip, here. Drip, drip. That's all right. Taco Bell is delicious. It was good. It was very good. I had a dream about Taco Bell, and I had a dream that they brought back the beef grilled stuff burrito. And I woke up, and it was you very have to, sad. You have to get past it, dude. You no, dude, it was the greatest it. thing ever. Fucking Taco Bell ruined my life. It's yeah, well, when I was a kid, they got rid of the Texas taco. What are you going to do? I mean, go to Taco John's instead. Uh, this isn't bad. It's tart. It's uh, it's actually it's a, pretty, a, it's a pretty good mix of, of like that tart isn't right in your face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. But honestly, it looks like it should be more flavorful. It does, yeah. That's a good way to put it. It's got that... It does have that, like... Uh, uh, Classic ale, ale kick to it. Man, there's like chunks in this thing. Yeah, it's unfiltered. That's pretty common. How do they get it? It like like the chunks like float halfway between the top and the bottom. It's kind of like a like a it's like a science project. Not really sure. Not really sure, Rob. But uh, so that's what we're drinking while we're having this conversation. It's a strange brew. We should we should tell the the listeners the time has finally arrived. Strange brew. We haven't done one. Yeah, the wait is over. Haven't done one since October, Rob. It's a long time. And we're going to do it on subject. 
We had so many subjects lined up to do strange brews on, but things have just not <laughs> just gone in that direction. Um, so we're going to be talking about the, the men in black, the real men in black, not Tommy Lee Jones, not Will Smith. Oh, I researched the wrong thing because I was going to say like the, 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 the second movie got a little bit, uh, I don't know. I'm just didn't like it. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Predominantly with the... Um, there was a word I was thinking of, but I couldn't think of it. From the um, research I did, you know, the men in black, have, there's this mythology behind it. Like every time a person experiences something paranormal, they get some proof or whatnot. Not, yeah, not every time. Not every time. Like, but uh, these, these men in black... Or you usually black. They show up in black cars, black, black clad, black car. Um, they they show up in and stuff like that. But it can be traced back to uh, the story from the research I've done. It all kind of goes back to 1947, June 27th, 1947. Um, there was a guy named Harold Dahl. He was in uh, uh, Washington's Maury Island. So he was like he was just get, gathering logs, like like one does. In the 40s, you gather some logs and, and stuff like that. He saw six donut-shaped obstacles hovering a uh, half mile or so above his boat. And then he said one of them fell about 1,800 feet. I don't know, or 1,500 feet. I don't know how you really gauge that, but he, he did. Um, raining uh, metallic debris. Some of it hit his son, and then it fucking killed their dog. <laughs> oh. It killed the dog. It killed the dog. Um as a dog owner, you shouldn't be so gleeful about that. I wasn't gleeful. I was just like, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> he was, uh, he, he, he popped some pictures of it. So what was that? What did they have in the 40s? Like a big old clunky camera? Yeah, well, that, I've, got, I've actually got some information on their cameras. Okay, well, let's talk about that in a second. Um, so they got that. They got the pictures, and then he showed his supervisor. Oh, this is the person ta- what, who had the camera. Yeah, this, um, Howard um, Dahl or whatever. Harold Dahl. Harold Dahl. Harold had Dahl. A, I don't had, know why I want to call him Howard. He but. took uh, he took the picture. He showed his supervisor what was going on, and you know people didn't necessarily believe him. And then the the very next morning, Rob, he had he was it was a single person in a black suit, so which That's is kind of yeah. which kind of breaks the pattern of normally uh, the men in black two or three people show up. Yeah, two or three people. Um, so this is this is a one person, and uh, they they ended up at a diner. They're talking about all the things that are going on. Like he says, I have proof. Uh, I got I got this, you know, shit. And the 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 guy says essentially like, um, I know, you know, a, a great deal more than you. The the man in black said this to him. Yeah, and then um, essentially he's just like. Don't ever repeat this. Don't show people the picture that you took, uh, everything like that. The uh, apparently the the government, of course, deemed it a hoax, which they're gonna do in any situation like that. Yeah. Yep. Um. But then uh, Dahl himself said it was as much. But I have a theory about that. Okay. Um. I you know, I think that he said it wasn't real after a while because he himself like just said like uh um you know he's just saying that because he maybe felt intimidated and who knows what else was said to him by this this individual well yeah you um, take so much flack and especially right. back then like nowadays right. if you say something like people are interested in it and so it's hard for us to relate but well, if you got uh, pictures too you can i mean you can post that shit in seconds yeah where yeah. here he had a Pictures he had to get developed and all that kind of crap, unless it's a Polaroid. I don't know if that existed uh, back then, but uh, yeah, you know, his supervisor thought he was a quack, and then um, this happened. So it's like, it's kind of like, am I really crazy? Am I crazy? Is it worth being co- like being told that you're crazy? Right, right. This is a question I feel like it was probably posed or whatever, but like, especially when they're <clears throat> like, he got the out. Especially like ten years later or whatever, he got the mm-hmm. out when, um, who is it? Uh, Gray, uh, Gray Barker, yeah, wrote. Uh, they knew too much about flying saucers and like, and and it was like, 
said that he he had told somebody that he was going to try and like create this mythology. Sure. And wrote this quote unquote true book, which is now like deemed questionable, like whether or not he, because like he had basically came out and said that he was just going to make it up. But yeah. Uh, so some people point to that as why the Men in Black are a hoax, but in in all like factually, like they predate the book by quite a while. And then the coin, like by 10 years or something. And then uh, the term men in black actually was coined before the book came out as well. Cause it was uh, the term men in black was coined in 1953 by Albert Bender. Okay. So like, uh, so th- yeah, there's a lot of different theories. Some people think that, Men in Black are just like that's crazy uh, uh-huh. paranoia by people who cl- who are also paranoid and see spaceships that aren't there. And, yeah, and it's just like the cr- delusions of crazy people. Some people think that it's a government agency that's trying to cover up uh, the existence of UFOs. Some people think it's in that uh, the Men in Black are aliens themselves. Right, which uh, I like that theory. I think that makes sense. There's two ways to look at uh, when you get into how they behave. Mm-hmm. You can like, you can either look at it as, and this is what like I kind of like the idea of a government agency that tells their agents to act ridiculous, so that it, it discredits the people who say I saw these people, right? Uh, and that that's like a fun. Uh, I don't know. That's that's crazy to me and interesting. But it probably it like fits better with the idea that these are these are like beings that are not from here, so they don't understand culture, our culture, and how we do things. So like they uh, can't do something as simple as use a fork and yeah. a knife, you know. Like, well, uh, let's 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 follow up with uh, kind of what you were talking about before the so the camera. You said you had some information about the cameras that they used back then. Uh, I, uh, apparently that's one thing, this is something I didn't know is that the men in black were known for using cameras. Okay. And I feel like this is where the flash in memory eraser. Sure. Sure. Thing came from in the men in black movie. Mm -hmm. What was actually happening is these men in black people, they would show up on the scene uh, and they like in multitudes of different ways. Oops. Uh, it's the men in black. Oh fuck. They know we're talking listening. about them. Uh, they, uh, now they just text you. Yeah. <laughs> now they just text you. Stop talking about what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, signed sincerely the men in black. STF you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, so they, they would carry around the, they would like, they would do these weird things like either a, they would use cameras, uh, flash photography to, like discombobulate people. Oh, in, sure. In Why, the after they saw it? Like, just like, because they, they show up after these Usually. people right, see right. something. Right. And then, like, um, it's kind of ridiculous to think about this, but like, they would like be standing in the dark, giving them a warning or whatever, and then they'd like flash a picture and take off while the person's eyes were like adjusting or something. So, so like, you couldn't get a good, like, you couldn't get a good look at them and, and you like, you, you know, like, um, Somewhere, somewhere out there, there's just this wall of shame of uh, yeah, of yeah. awkward fuckers. <laughs> well, and they used pictures. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and they took like t- like uh, apparently one like they used to they would show up at people's houses and offer and call themselves photographers. Okay. And then they, they do would, other stuff like that. Yeah, too, and then but. take take photographs, give a business card for like some place that didn't exist, and then right. never come back with the pictures. Um, okay. so, and I don't know what the point, like, I can't even fathom what the point of that is, except for to get into somebody's house. But it seemed like, it seems like based on all accounts that they would show up knowing things about the witnesses to these UFO phenomenon, mm-hmm. uh, already knowing information, all the information they needed to know about the people to kind of harass them or, or try and, uh, uh, threaten them from saying anything. So I don't know why they needed to like take pictures. That's weird. And that's just another way to, yeah. to just something to maybe, especially make if they don't weird, yeah. Yeah, make it like all of a sudden they're, they're telling the story and then people are like, and then there was a flash of light that blinded me or something like that. It's just, I think it just adds to the confusion of the situation to the, most of these people. And, and maybe they, you know, maybe they just like, I just, when you think back to like a lot of these accounts are like in the fifties and whatever, like, mm-hmm. which maybe I guess 
society has kind of like moved, moved like in the fifties, things were pretty, I've read get, getting to be pretty whatever, but like, weird, yeah. you know, like uh, when you're trying to say like, Oh, I saw a flash of, of something. Right. Uh, I assume it was a camera because that's the only thing that I know that my brain can think of that pr- like produces that flash. Right. Uh, but like, well, who knows what it really was. Right. So some of the patterns of uh, the men in black, in, in a sense, it's they always appear unannounced. They don't really. You're not going to get a fucking appointment. You're gonna you're gonna experience something paranormal. Whether it's uh, a you see a creature, you see a UFO. Predominantly, it's UFOs. From my understanding, chip yeah. flying in the sky. These guys show up. Um, they're usually in in black suits, and they a lot of times pull up in you know in black cars. They're they're traveling in twos or threes and uh um essentially they just warn the people to stop their research or stop sharing the evidence of the things that they found or uh face you know the, these dire consequences um they say that the men in black have also seen aliens and then like you said before a lot of them think they are aliens themselves or some form of like a demonic supernaturals. So um, a lot of times too, from what I've read, um, so I, I read a couple of things on Reddit, um, people posting on there with their accounts, re- more recent accounts of their experiences with the men in black, whether it's true or not. Um, one of them being, you know, they sound, they found, they saw some, essentially something hovered right over them. And then it was like, I want to say like four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. They, the next thing they know, it's, it's five of the next morning and they're in a field and they didn't, you know, they were like, they had no recollection of anything that happened between those times. They, they regrouped, they go back to their, their place and the, and then these people show up and they're saying like, never speak of what your experiences or what happened. A lot of times they pose themselves um, as someone from the military. A lot of times it's the air force. So they were, they, they're, they're playing tricks on these people saying, you know, well, what you saw was just a, a government experience or whatever. Don't talk about it. Or, you know, the government test, uh, something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so a lot of times, yeah, it's the Air Force that they're they're saying that they're from. Before you said, like back in the day, it was photographers that that did this to continue the uh, confusion and stuff. So it's it's pretty interesting, and it's uh, it's pretty intimidating from my understanding. Like these these people, you know, who just show up and they say they're with the military. You know what ha- what happened, and you give them the details, and it's like, but there's always something that they have that can that you can spot if you're observant enough. Like that's one thing that's a constant thread throughout actual uh, Men in Black, um, okay. uh, like uh, uh, encounters is like they'll show up in in a in a like in, in a military uniform, but they'll have like the badges on in the wrong places. Oh sure. Uh, like and and like one of the other big things is they look like like they walk in a very unusual manner. Like they're not like they don't like they just learn how to walk. Mm-hmm. Or they speak in very unusual patterns. They tend to be Eastern European in descent and like expressionless. And uh, yeah, so it's like they, they do have like these weird, it, it does like from the people that have claimed to have like, or that have sightings that are like, uh, what would it be established as real? Like not phony, not like just people like trying to get whatever. They, they all sure. have, there's like this, thread of commonality uh that is these people that don't look normal like they don't look natural in their own skin yeah uh because like, like shapeshifters well that's the idea of like them being alien you know sure. uh and, and it, it fits if that's true but it also could be that they're like trained to be weird or whatever but like because there's uh um there's witnesses that said like like i said before like a waitress had to go and, and, and teach them how to use a fork and knives to cut food. And then yeah. they didn't even chew the food. They kind of just swallowed it. Hmm. There was a... So You've got... Um, um, there was a, um, a doctor that was threatened by the men in black back in 55. Uh, uh, he, he founded the International Flying Saucer Bureau. So this is kind of around that time of the, the first account that they're talking about Maury Island... 
Um, he was about to, you know, unveil a bunch of stuff to prove uh, the U.S. government had uh, covered up proof of UFOs. And then um, he was going to publish all this stuff in a, in a review. And then he was visited by the men in black. Uh, he claimed that the three people, again, dressed in black, three of them, visited his house, warned him against, you know, pursuing his research um, and, and just everything like that. Um, he, it says that they left him scared for his life. So I don't know exactly what. And then he shut everything down. Like the Flying Saucer Bureau was was down, was over with after this incident. So I don't know, like, they must well, they followed, say something. Yeah, they, they followed John Keel around for quite a while, who wrote the Mothman Prophecies. Really? And uh, to the point where they actually, like, he was having such strange activity, such strange things, like strange things happening while he was writing that book where he would like, I think we talked about this a little bit, but we this kind of co- yeah. coincides where it's like he would have, he would like be getting messages from people at places that he didn't even know he was going to be. Uh, he would just pull off the road and stop at a hotel and like there'd be messages and stuff for him. So, and, and but like uh, this, apparently this like um, unidentified blonde woman started showing up at uh the his witness like the people that he had quote like was gonna quote in his books yeah. and even some people that he never published their statements or anything but she showed up at their houses as well saying that she was his assistant and needed more information from them and whatever and then like got a bunch of info didn't threaten them or anything yeah uh but it's still creepy yeah it's still like you know and, and then they said oh your assistant stopped by here and like he had to go back and like talk to everybody again because that uh pulled him deeper into the story but yeah like because the men in black were kind of a big part of that because they were uh, they were around in point pleasant when that stuff was going down another uh interesting one here that was and and these all kind of like i think a lot of times it's when people have photographic evidence that's when they really get involved um back in the day i don't know what year this was taken, but uh, a guy named Jim Templeton, he took uh, like a picture of his daughter. And then there's like this spaceman figure in the back. So here you can look at it. It's kind of, that's kind of weird, huh? Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. You yep. seen that picture. So um, it kind of just looks like, you know, it looks like a spaceman uh, when he took the photo and no one's like, you know, what the hell is that? Where is it from? Because it's not, it's definitely not a cloud. And when was that taken? I don't know the year. Um, this... Because I, mean, I think that's important about that photo. It's had to be his color photo. I would probably guess by the clothes and stuff, maybe the 60s, 70s. Because we didn't go to space until, like, we went to the moon 69. in 69, you know? So, uh-huh. like, um, but, when, you know, I don't know when we sent the first orbit people around the planet. That happened know. first. But it's like, uh, if, like, so say, it, it'd be nice to know when, because I feel like I, the thing I watched about that, that was kind of a big deal about, when the photo was taken yeah. because if it was taken in the say the 50s there were no space suits like re- like you know like you're going you're jumping 10 years in time and this thing is in the background that's 10 like 10 years down the road or whatever right but it was uh, it was authenticated by Kodak um it's a real picture it's, yeah, it's just, a real it's picture just an insane like idea of what happened this is interesting so um you know in the movie Men in Black. It was a it was a Marvel comic and everything like that. Um, they kind of go by letters, J, K, yeah, yeah, everything like this. And this in this uh, instance, when they showed up to uh, this dude's house, uh, Jim Templeton's place, he was visited by two agents who referred to themselves as nine and ten, number nine and number ten. Um, you know, they wanted to see, they wanted him to take them to the the site of the photo. They questioned him about the event. Um, you know, he was saying that he didn't see, he didn't know that was there until the photo was taken, until after they developed the picture. Yeah. Um, he noticed it, obviously, and it's pretty noticeable. So it had to either pop up at the right time, just go super fast or something in the moment, you know, or you're just not paying attention. You're taking a picture of your kid. Um, and with back in the day, it's not like with smartphones where you see really the photo you're taking yeah, until, yeah. until you after to, it's yeah, done. It's... Um, so he pretty much said, you know, he didn't see the thing personally. Um, 
these guys became angry. They left and they they never visited him again. Um, and they said he was later uh, contacted um, by two employees at the missile launch pad in Australia who claimed uh, they saw two figures that resembled the man in the photo of the launch pad uh, security footage. So the missiles at that site in Australia produced 20 miles away from the field where Templeton took the photo. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Crazy. Okay. So that's kind of interesting, too. I mean, if people are visiting you after something, you, shit's going down. Something's happening. Yeah, I think that they, you know, it's they probably do more harm than they do good for themselves because mm-hmm. like that's just making that's that's legitimizing what you're like what happened or what you saw. Like even uh it, like uh, the Minerva monster thing like uh there was a dude that showed up. He was by himself. And uh he did everything that a man in black like a man in black would do except for he wasn't in black he wasn't driving a black car which uh it does say in my notes that after um after it was like published that like i believe it was john keel that after he published that the men in black like wore black and drove black cadillacs they stopped driving black cadillacs and switched to volkswagens uh so oh, really? they, so they do try and like cover their tracks that way uh, and if you think back, always to like, very comfortable, luxurious cars, though. At least they're riding in comfort. Is Volkswagen known for comfort? And, yeah, they're kind of bougie, aren't they? They're kind of nice cars, right? I, I thought it was engineering that <laughs> Volkswagen was known for, but uh, anyway. What do I uh, know? But anyway, like uh, I wear blue jeans, Rob. Okay, that's a joke. I don't know what it means. Get it? Like men in black. I'm in blue jeans. All right, never mind. All right, <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, they, they try to cover yeah, up. Yeah. So like this dude, like this dude showed up at the Minerva monster location, which is like a Bigfoot sighting, uh, where there was that evidence, uh, and he came and, and they, they were like going to have some, some scientists come out and check stuff out. Well, this guy showed up first, start, took a few pictures, uh, took somebody else's picture that they had taken of mm-hmm. the evidence and then like basically like what it sounds like like a like a child like uh, went and kicked dirt over the <laughs> over the footprint and then ran into his car and took <laughs> off do you, so do you think uh the men in black is a is a in itself a government agency or do you think it's something more it might be both uh both uh, like i think it might be a government agency that is still aliens and, and it's just working with our government. Like something is weird about these people. It's not just a government agency because there's multiple like occurrences where they'll show up, say that they're yeah. there to like read your meters, go into your basement. And then after like a couple of hours, when the people go down there to go like, what, what's going on down here? Like, why haven't you left yet? They're gone, but they never left. Hmm. Uh, and there's no other way out of the basement. Other times they're just sitting there looking at the stairs yeah, like they can't get out or something, you know. Like there's something definitely amiss there. Yeah, that is that is interesting. There's one uh, I've got, like uh, this one dude had them like uh, Ralph Butler of Otto, uh, uh Awatana, Minnesota. Sorry yeah. if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, he had somebody visit him in 1967 who went by the name of Richard French. Uh, hit all the markers of what a men in black guy looks like. Uh, and then, like, this butler guy offered him some jello, and then the, the men in black guy, like, tried to drink it and acted like he never saw jello before and had to be taught how to eat jello. Really? Yeah. Which who's giving their who's giving their guests Jello? Like it was somebody that's like uh, 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 shows up in a black it's suit. Really want some Jello? You look like you like Jello. Oh, Jello. Oh God. Yeah. So there's like Phil doesn't like Jello. Yeah. Apparently not. Yeah. So I mean, uh, they basically. That's that. You know, I don't know what else to say about them. They're, they're weird. They show up after some stuff happens. A lot of people have, you know, gone up right against them and written stories about them and they didn't get disappeared or died or any, you know, like, uh, 
I'm sure maybe a few have, but they weren't noteworthy. Yeah. Um, if you're if if the men in black were good at what they did, <laughs> people would disappear and we wouldn't know about it. You know, so maybe maybe they did. Yeah. A lot. Uh, some of the questions that they they tend to ask, at least from what I've seen, um, as far as even a recent account in 2004, they're just pretty much ask you, you know, what you saw that night or that day. Um, what do you think you saw? Did you take any photos? Uh, were there anybody else? Was there anybody else there that would have had recording devices or cameras? Um, do you know if anyone recorded? Have you spoken about it? Any unusual debris at the location? Uh, would you be withholding any inf- important information? Um, you know, these. This is all on Reddit too. So I mean, I don't really know how accurate these are, and like I said, it could be all fabricated. Um, this guy just said, like, you know, he didn't answer the questions, and he withheld a lot of information <laughs> to what he saw, um, and they just strongly adv- advised that he doesn't talk about it, and then. Um, they implied that they would be keeping their eye on him in case he decided to ignore their demands. Um, He didn't know who they were, um, but he believes that they were the men in black. Since the encounter, he's been hesitant and careful about what he saw. And then uh, he's uh, put put it on Reddit. He said the years after that, he's only had a couple of UFO sightings at night on separate occasions, but he hasn't found any more visitors from odd men dressed in black. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What do you think what you would do if you... Like, have you ever seen anything? Yeah, one time. One time I did. Um, It was... I was driving... It was in North Fond du Lac, actually. So I was driving... um, I was driving a dude from work back to his place. And all of a sudden, I, like, look up and I see what I can, like describe as a shooting star you know yeah but it was like it was almost like like an asteroid like falling you know it was it was longer than a shooting star it wasn't just a second it was something was coming down and there was a there was you know a cosmic tail you know what i mean um it was going down and then all of a sudden it essentially like turned and just fucking disappeared like it, it just yeah, vanished. Yeah. It, it, you could see it. You could see that it turned and then that it just like went to like hyperdrive or something. And then it was just, it was just gone. And the guy I was with saw it with, he was, he was sitting right next to me and I was like, dude, you see that? And, um, he saw it. So that was uh, pretty, pretty wild. But you know, I didn't, I was driving. We didn't take pictures or anything of it. But I, I, even when I saw it, like, cause I saw that one, I, I think I talked about it on the show. Yeah, uh, you did. You don't. I don't think I could have gotten a picture of it anyway. You, you really get, have to you, be. Only, you only get a millisecond. Like phones take like take time right. to load and get out and whatever. But um, what would and you I, do? And I think I think that the men in black only come when it's like third uh, 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 encounters, like the third kind, where you actually are in contact with something. Something or, falls. Yeah. Or like you have you have physical like, whatever. Like if you see a flyby, they're not going to show up. Or but, if you have like clear photographic evidence. You're yeah. talking about it, uh, sharing it, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's which that's, this this says that John Keel actually was uh, trying to ch- like would chase the Men in Black down and try and follow them. Wouldn't that be something? Like he was trying to like, and he had police officers looking for him. And uh, so what? But if they're a government agency, why would the police get involved then? Well, because the police are still low level, they don't know what's going on. I suppose, yeah, like you're you, right. Like, like to assume people that assume that conspiracy theories, ha- the the more people involved, the less of a conspiracy theory it is. So it's like local police, they don't know. Like, fair enough. Like, you know, it's like there's probably people in the government, like in the federal government, that don't don't know. Even if it can, assuming it's a go- it's a government agency, right? You know, it's like it's all off the book. So it's like, so if it's not if it's not a government agency. Then, really, I, it's aliens, shapeshifters, trying to learn or trying to distract people from their presence. But really, I mean, their presence could just be a couple guys. What if we just went up? Yeah. What if know, we just showed up at some people's independently house? Independently rich dudes with nothing to do. <laughs> They're just really bored. <laughs> did you see some weird shit last night? Oh, yeah, I did. I don't know how they get the info, though. Like, that's the weird thing is like, what, uh, like they'd show up. Pretty quick on the scene. 
Yeah, and usually the next morning, like, so next you, day. They, they almost had to have known from the source. What if they were there? What if they were there and like they're there to monitor? You know, they're they have some sort of knowledge, some sort of intel that this shit's gonna happen at this time, at this location. Whether it's uh, we're testing some alien aircraft yeah, that's, yeah, or yeah. Um, something, and then they're there, they see. All right, I see. I, I'm the man in black. I see you there, and you're fucking taking pictures. Yeah. I'm gonna find out who you are, and I'm gonna go there to your house and be like, "Listen, dude, like, fucking." Yeah, based on the fact that they show up so quick, they almost have to have some kind of contact with the thing that is being right. seen, and that thing is going. Hey, uh, we got a little too low in our cloaking device malfunction, so go check out people in this area and see if anybody's talking. You know, or something. yeah. Do you think? Do you think they visit everyone in the area? So you live in an apartment complex. Do they visit everybody in that apartment complex, or do they just somehow narrow it down to you? I feel like they narrow it down. Yeah, that's what from everything I like. They seem to be able. Every, like, they seem to know things about the people that right. they talk to that no one should know. Like, Not, a, like, like things that are just in their head. Yeah, every story I've seen or I've read, you know, it's always they have some sort of evidence they've seen or they've seen things. It's never like, oh, they went to go talk to my neighbors to see if they saw any weird shit in the sky last night. Yeah, they like, didn't, like, know yeah. for a fact that these people they didn't check my references. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, no, uh, so it's. Uh, and that's that's kind of like when you get into the alien mythology. There's this idea of like brain scan where they can sure. re, they read your thoughts or they they infiltrate your brain somehow. But then uh, they would know if you're lying. Well, I think they know either way. It's like it's just but, more but intimidation. It, it, it's it's. I think it's more like you know, they're probably gauging how they can. What I, you know, it's like when you ask somebody a question that you already know the answer to to see if they are, they're going to tell you the truth or whatever. Sure. Whether you say, I know you're lying or not, you know, you walk away from that conversation knowing that, hey, these people tell the tr- told the truth or these people didn't. If you say, like, so they know what you know and you hold some stuff back and go, I don't know anymore. They walk away going, all right, we got to keep some guys posted in the area and we'll write some threatening notes sure. to this guy because clearly if he wasn't willing to tell us the truth, then we can't believe him when he said he, then, you know, we can't believe right. him when he says he's not going to tell anybody. There was an interesting story that I saw one time. Um, I forget what the show was called, but they interviewed a guy who claimed to have uh, uh, had sex with a bunch of aliens and even was the father to some aliens. So essentially, he was in a forest at one point in time. There was all these. Is this like, a guy where he found, they found the hair? I don't know. I don't know what it was. Oh, but okay, well, I'll tell. They, I'll talk about that after you talk about. He this. pretty much was in a. Um, he was in a, um, a forest, bumming around, and then um, he uh, ran into some aliens and ended up banging them, a bunch of them. Aliens have needs too. <laughs> And uh, I don't remember if it was one time or if there was a, uh, um, what was Phil looking at? It's kind of creeping me out. Anybody in Dude, my Dude, he's just chilling. Okay. Well, we're talking about the spooky shit and he's I just, just see him looking over. over there. Uh, anyways, this guy was in the forest and he was uh, banging he's looking aliens. looking at a place on your carpet that he wants to chew yeah, up more. Motherfucker. Um, that he was, he, he was, and then he had uh, uh, babies with, like ba- he created babies with these aliens, but he didn't mention ever. Men in Black showing up at his house. I feel like that's a pretty intense encounter. That's more think, than a third I, kind. Yeah, that's like yeah. a fornication kind, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like they were probably like, uh, no one's going to believe this guy anyway. <laughs> like, there's, there's like, uh, it's like the the uncanny valley where like there's, there's a certain, you know, uh, like you... There's something that's considered too little for the men in black to show sure. up. And then there's like the valley of, of, of like encounters that it's like, okay, we got to go threaten some people. And then you go so far behind, like where it's like, oh, I got a secret handshake with the, with the grays. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we be talking in code word, like, uh, and they're like, that dude, that dude takes care of himself because he just sounds crazy. Right. Like, even though he's telling the truth, we know no one's going to believe him. So we don't yeah, even need he to. Like, he uh, can, he, I hope he goes and talks because he's only going to discredit people. This guy, uh, he like, he would like paint pictures of what he saw. I think he went back there like a couple times and like, or like the, uh, yeah, the first like time. Like in a longing fashion, like I hope they're here uh, again. I don't know. Like he banged a couple of them. And then I think the next time it was, uh, um, 
they had his kid with him. Like yeah. his alien, half alien, half Did human. Did they take the child. kid? Was it joint custody? No, he didn't have to pay child support or anything like that. Yeah. So he's got some alien babies out there in the world. But uh, it's pretty interesting. I mean, he drives. He got. The he's dude. got to take him to Nebulon on on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, they got to meet. You know, they meet at Mars halfway point. Um, but it was there was a whole bunch the of dude. Uh, seemed super. He did seem crazy. Like yeah, there's some people that you mind. can't believe, but like there are actual like there's a lot of stories of stuff like that happening. And actually, there is one story in particular where a guy uh, claims that a blonde. Like a blonde, like a, a a blonde woman that looked oh, yeah. like a like a an alien, like an alien. She had bigger like almond eyes and a small chin, like yeah, yeah. real small nose. I mean, plastic surgery does that too. Yeah, kind of like Michael Jackson esque. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Then all right, but, I was interested. I was interested up until you said that. Well, th- I think well, like you know how Michael Jackson kind of got fake looking at the end. It, it was not. It wasn't necessary. Yeah. Because this dude wrote, uh, made a like had a, has a painting as well that he did out of memory. But what uh, is it like? Was he just like uh, take me to your leader? <laughs> I can't do Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, are we done now? Yes. So anyway, this uh, this alien had back this. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, had this like blonde but translucent hair. Okay. And uh, they like, so people thought he was crazy until they did like a, a search of the room and there was a, like, there was a hair there and they, they got DNA like samples off of it that they couldn't identify. It was a real hair and it was, it was exactly what he said it was, but it had like, I feel like it had like, three or four different areas of the world of DNA. So like South American, uh, North Mm -hmm. American, Eastern European, whatever. But then also there was this other DNA set that they couldn't match to anything. And like it kind of led credence to this dude's story because there was physical evidence that was left behind. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there it is. What would you do if the men in black showed up at your house? You saw something. How come it's only for like alien stuff? How come it's never for like ghost shit? They showed up for from the Minerva monster. That was Bigfoot, but some people think Bigfoot is alien. Uh, in terms sure. of spiritual stuff, I don't know. There's probably too many. Uh, they just leave that to the exorcists. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's probably easier for them to just like go. It was a closet. Right. Right. You know, like whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so, how are your feelings towards the Men in Black? You. Are you believing these stories, these these encounters? Or, I think they're kind of pussies, honestly. Like the Men in Black are yeah. pussies. <laughs> There's a lot of threats with a little bit of follow through. Bring that it. we know of. Yeah, that's true. If, I they're, guess, if like, they're dead, they can't share their stories. Well, that, well, they can't do anything to me because if I'm not on the podcast next week, people are going to start talking. So that's right. We're safe. We're, uh, yeah, it's we're, the people that are obscure and 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 can disappear into obscurity. How do we rise above uh, the Men in Black and, and bring them down? I think we need to figure out what they started wearing after because they cl- they probably don't wear black anymore. No one's walking around Sometimes, in black suits. There's only been one one story that I read that he wasn't. They weren't wearing black. They were wearing blue. I read a few stories where they were wearing different stuff. Okay, they always they said like too a lot of times like they wear they all wear like similar suits, but their hats are different. Yeah, or their shoes are wrong. Yeah, like, like they all wear the, different the, the hats. Wrong or, shoes for the suit or sure. whatever. Yeah, there's always something a little off. Okay. Um. I don't. I. You know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I would do. Well, um, nowadays with hipsters, it's kind of hard to decide. Maybe yeah, they're yeah. in black. After the Blues Brothers came out, like it was very hard. That movie's to... stupid. Did you watch the original or the Blues yes. Brothers two thousand? The original. You know, like the original. It was dumb. All right, that's cool. <laughs> I really don't have much of an opinion. It's not like a movie that I. It's not my. It's not a go to great movie for me. Some people really love it. Yeah, they do. I just that's, and, just, that's and just my opinion. I get it. I get your opinion too. I think Rocky's stupid too. Yeah, that's okay. Really dumb movie. You know I what liked, movie I think? Uh, I liked want, Cliffhanger. You know what movie I really like? E.T. Weird. Okay. You don't like that movie? It's slow. Yeah, I guess. I remember I watched the first Men in Black when I was a little kid. I wanted I wanted it for I got it for Christmas. It's pretty young when it came out. I think it came out what ninety seven. Something like that. I was seven or eight years old. Yep. 
Is this going to be another story like Independence Day? Because I just listened to an episode where you where you said you did not understand that Independence Day was about an alien invasion. And I said, so you were a dumb kid. You were like, yeah. I mean, that movie came out when I was pretty little. Okay. I mean, I realized it after I saw the aliens and shit. It's not what know. you claimed in that episode. That, I don't know. Go it's back and listen to Zapped. Zapped? That was a long time ago that we did yeah, that Yeah, it was. It was way long ago. Um, I don't know. If, it's called fucking Independence Day. I thought it was about fireworks or some shit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to, to cut you off. Uh, about I just yeah. remember I watched it and, um, um, you know, 97, I was six or seven years old. I didn't even know it was like a Marvel thing. I didn't know what Marvel was when I was seven. I don't even think it was from, I don't think Marvel had a studio. No, like, no, no, I, like, no, I don't, didn't. I don't think it was a Marvel movie, but it's based off Marvel comics. Yeah. It's also based off uh, a, a, a ghost government agency that doesn't exist or does exist. And we don't know. The thing that prompted me to wanting to do an episode on it was like the shitty YouTube video that I watched where this guy's like, okay, I gotta be really quick about this. And then he proceeds to make a 20 minute video while he whispers the whole time. It's taping like surveillance fans or surveillance uh, cameras. And he's like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. And it's like a, a guy, man in black. And then like, and this one, they like essentially claim to like have some sort of supernatural powers, which all the stories that I've looked into has never been, it's always been, don't talk about this shit or we'll fuck you up. You know, where this video, it was, he like did like a hand gesture at one time and then she just froze, got up and then walked out with him. It was. I think that was fake. Yeah, um, but well, even that the, the you said that there was one where like they ran into somebody and then they they lost an entire day. Th- no, yeah, but that wasn't because of the Men in Black. Oh, is that, that was their encounter. That's what prompted the Men. Yeah, in Black so they okay. had. All right, my bad. All they right, woke right. up in a field. They they had no recollection of what happened. Uh, you know, seven. Well, that's hours. What I, yeah, and I guess that's kind of that's what like I mean alien by, encounters right there. Yeah, there are a lot of bark and no bite. You know, like right. uh, that we know of. So it's uh, but you're right, bunch of pussies. You if you're know, in the Men in Black and you're listening to this, fight me. Yeah, write me a note because that's your mo. <laughs> <laughs> Just ring my doorbell. I won't answer. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the only thing is, like, they do disappear sometimes. Yeah, they just vanish. Yeah, and I like, but that's not. They, that's still not having any power over another person what i'm talking about so the, the men in black say don't talk about the experience that led us to come here they never say don't talk about this experience that you're having right now this pleasant exchange yeah yeah i think like which well, is that, interesting yeah, and that's the thing like there's that was one of those ideas where it's like they wanted you to talk about them and that's why they acted so weird because then it would only make you look crazy okay that makes sense well all right you believe it or not yeah, I like to believe that stuff. Me too. I wanna, where can I'm, we? Where? When, how do we get in an encounter with the Men in Black? UFO chasers. All right. How do you? How does one chase a UFO? You never really know what they're gonna happen. I don't know. Starting Dundee, I guess. Yeah. At uh, Benson's <laughs> or whatever it's called, Anchor Inn. I've never been there. Me neither. I, I want. We should go. Yeah, let's do it. He's got an alien in a jar. Really. Yeah. Well, then we, that's the guy to talk to. <laughs> Clearly, the men in black have to have talked to him. They have. Uh, they have, have to have talked to him. He has a UFO days every every year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah we, I was going to go one year, but I didn't. We should go this year. I'm down. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Cool. We drank a hibiscus ale brewed with hibiscus flower Roselle from Anderson Brewing or Anderson Valley Brewing Company. Uh, Rob, you, you drinking it or you dumping it? Um, I'm drinking it, but I got to say, like, um, it's not the, it's not the greatest beer it, we've it, ever it's, had. It's really weird because it's not, it's not bad. But I, I'm having a hard time drinking it for some okay. reason. I enjoyed it. It's not bad. You know, it's for me. It was a pretty typical. I don't, I don't mean typical t- ale. Yeah. I don't mean taste wise. I'm having a hard time drinking it. I just mean like for some reason I'm not. It feels like I'm drinking a lot of it, but it's taking little sips. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just not uh, physically. I'm not. I'm having a hard time making myself drink it. All right. Well, you don't. But you don't, it's it's it's. You don't have to finish it. I, I don't. Right. I don't dislike the taste. It, it, it looks like it should have more, like a more prevalent taste to it. Yeah. Well, uh, but there's just like this weird fruity aftertaste. So for sure. All right, Rob. Well, uh, good talking to Men in Black. Yeah. Hopefully, we're here next week.
Yeah, if we're not uh, um, right, send right, help. your local senator. Yep, yep. Also, um, be on the lookout, and we'll post it to my feed, our Dudes with Bruce feed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a new podcast. Oh, uh, nice! It's called Losing It with Drew and Joe. Uh, Joe from Things Joe Hates. Uh, we're doing a podcast together in regards to um, losing weight. Oh, nice! We're on our exercising. Uh, stuff like that. He need he. I think his goal is to lose about sixty. Um, my goal is to lose about. Well, my initial goal was to lose thirty. If you could weigh nothing, if if would you? Would that be your goal? Zero? No. Yeah. I'm no. Just wondering if that. If that, I'm just trying to see how deep the psychological <laughs> wound is that you have about how because you're, <laughs> I I see you and I don't see somebody who needs to worry about it, but. I need to lose a few more. If you you could, if you wanted, but I think you're. I'm trying. Damn good. I'm trying like, to. Okay. All right. Well, just be more healthy. You know. So be on the lookout for that. I'll post it on the dudes with Bruce feed. Uh, once, I can't once even we be get a guest one. on that one. I have to try. I have to start a podcast called Gaining It, so I can go and be on losing it. Well, as you, a guest host, you know, it's it's a health podcast. About that, you know, I know. I'm just joking. I don't want to. I, I was just joking. All right. All right. Well, uh, good talk. Yep. Pew, pew, audio. Goodbye, everyone.